Amen. Amen. I tell you, it's no circumstance or chance. And tonight, that one body, it's not one member, but many. Yes. Yes. Verse 15 says, if the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? There's times you might have a part of your body you don't like, or a lot of people have problems. I've got a messed up hand that, you know, sometimes I'll use my left hand. There's different things, but you can't look at that and say, you're not part of my body. I don't need you. You're ugly. You don't work right. You're lazy. You're this, you're that. I don't need you. It's part of us. We can't look at anybody, even the ones that, you know, not holding up for sin in any way, but people that get out and make mistakes, get caught in a snare of the devil. We can't look at them and say, we don't need them no more. We don't need them. We do need them. Heaven needs them. Heaven needs to be populated with people. I believe God can take the worst and clean them up and populate heaven with them. That's the kind I want to reach. That's the kind we want to reach in this hour. Amen. Amen. The ones that church don't want, the ones that religion won't have. Amen. The ones that know when they come through, it's going to be nothing but Jesus. Amen. There's going to be no, no accolade or no flesh pin that can be pinned on them. It's going to have to be nothing but the blood of the Lamb. It's the only thing they're going to be able to glory in. Amen. That's what I want tonight. I want to see it poured out. In this hour, believe it tonight. He said, the hand can't say, I'm not of the body. And if the ear shall say, verse 16, because I'm not the eye. Well, the ear can't do what the eye does, but it doesn't mean one's any more important. Because it's all one body. Amen. Praise God. And he said in verse 17, if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If everybody prophesied, who would do the discerning? If everybody had the gifts of miracles, who would do the teaching? Who would do the other things? But see, it all flows together. And we get in that one spirit and he begins to flow. That river of God that comes right out of the throne room of God. You know how you get access to it? By worship. By praising him. By entering into a state of holy worship. Where it's not just laughing and joking and cutting up anymore. There's a soberness that's almost disappeared from the houses of God. From the assemblies of the people. I believe it's going to return. I know it's going to return. We're in a sobering time. There's people right now that don't know whether their home's going to be there in the morning. You can get on an airplane literally and fly halfway across the world and get off in a country. And those people that look just like you get up and go to work every morning just like we do. They don't realize or understand in the morning if they're even going to have a home. If they're going to have a place to sit down and eat breakfast. Amen. The devil wants to steal that from us. He wants to take that liberty that God has entrusted us with. Amen. I wish it was crosses on every hill, on every mountain, on every ridge from here to Timbuktu. Amen. You couldn't have too many. You couldn't have too many. Amen. Get ready to close. Verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Amen. He's pleased with us tonight yes. when we abide in him. Yes. When we do that, what we call us to do, and we seek to please him in spite of what our flesh wants to do, yes. it pleases him. Right. It gets his attention. Yes. Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You could sacrifice, you could deny your flesh until you couldn't walk, as the old timer said, till your eyeballs fell out, till you fasted so much. But if you weren't obedient to God when He moved on you or spoke to you, yeah. it would be, you know, heaven's diet plan. It wouldn't help you any spiritually. Yeah. And we need that help in this hour. We need revival in this hour. Amen. I was praying and, and I appreciate the privilege to be able to help the church and, and try to serve the people as best I can for a season, for a time. But I'm praying, Brother Carl, for revival. Amen. Yeah. I'm praying that God would stir up some men, stir up some women, stir up some young men and old men and young women because there's something for everybody. He said, you're old men. 
You're old. You're not old. You just get started. No. No. We don't need to retire. We just need to refire. Amen. Hey, if you're old, good news. He said, your old man was going to what? Dream dreams. Young man's going to see visions. On servants, and he didn't leave anybody out in handmaids. See? There was a time you women folk couldn't even get in this. You couldn't even get access to it. The Lord blessed me when I was a teenager. I wound up in, in Woodbourne, New York, and then Crown Heights, an area in Brooklyn, New York, for a season, doing some volunteer work. And I met some Hasidic Jewish people, Orthodox Jews, that were so. By the, I mean, you talk about. You talk about by the law. And the women folk couldn't even come into the assembly. They had to stay outside. But see, that's not like that anymore. Aren't you glad of that? Yeah. You better be glad of that. You men don't say that. <laughs> but we're glad of that. Yeah. But the door was open. Yeah. He said, on servants and handmaids, I'm going to pour out my spirit. Yeah. And somebody said, well, I believe that was all fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Part of it was. Yeah. Because part of this, he's talking about the last days. Yeah. He's talking about restoring the years that the palmer worm and the canker worm hath eaten. On the day of Pentecost, they wasn't meant to restore. That was the first outpouring. That was the freshness of it. Yes. Yeah. But now we're looking back, and you hear it so many times. 50 years ago, 75 years ago, it was so this, it was so that, and it was. What happened? A lot of things happened, and that's another message for another night. But I know this. There's going to be a restoration. Of everything God's people have lost. There's going to be a bride. Without spot. Without wrinkle. Without blemish. Or any such thing. She's going to be just like him. A man leaves his father and mother. And cleaves to his wife. And they twain. They too shall be one flesh. He said I speak a mystery concerning Christ in the church. We leave the world, we leave the mindset and the belief system and, 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 the, and the styles and, and ways and, and thinking of this world and are joined to Christ as his bride. Yes. And he wants to be one flesh with us. Not beat on us and lock us up in a closet somewhere, but he wants to lead us. Like a good husband, like a biblical husband would lead his wife and family. He wants to lead us that kind of way tonight. When we get sick, He wants to heal us. He wants to bind up our broken heart when it gets wounded, when it gets broken. He wants to take us in His arms. But we won't let Him. Religion won't let us. Mindsets won't let us. Guilt won't let us. But tonight, let's get back into that one body and let Him do what He said He would do. Let's let Him love on us. Let's let Him bless us. Let's let Him come to us in the night and give us dreams and visions and revelations. Take us out of this body. Put us in another realm where we can see something. Where we can come out of this no open vision season, this uh, impart stuff, and step on into that kingdom of God. Amen. Where we know Him as He is. Where we look at Him face to face. Look at Him through His Word. Amen. You'll never see Him like that, but you look at Him through this Word. You can run your fingers through his hair tonight. Amen. And behold the Lamb of God. Amen. That takes away. This right here takes away. The sins of the world. Amen. He's just looking for men and women. That don't care who gets the glory. That will step out and say I'm going to proclaim that one God. That, that one Lord. That one faith. That one baptism. Whose name is Jesus. I'm going to stand. Hallelujah. No matter what comes what goes. And proclaim his glory. And his name. Hallelujah. And his good deeds among the people. Yes. Amen. That he's a good God. He, good that he came to save us. He came to save us to the uttermost. Amen. And to the guttermost. To the lowest level. Yeah. Even down to the fire. Hating the garments spotted by the flesh. Pulling them out. Saving them with fear. Right out of the fire. Amen. When your spirit gets right, you won't want nobody to be lost. When our spirit really gets like God's, we won't want anybody to go to hell. Amen. But there's still a hell. Amen. It's still real. It's just as real as heaven is tonight. It is. It is. Cold as ice. Yep. But it's still the word of God. Amen. It's still the truth. Amen. Amen. And
And there's still only one way to escape that place. And it's Jesus tonight. He's the only way. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's from in the beginning to amen tonight. And everything that's in between. If we pass through this word of God. Amen. It'll be the proverbial sword. Amen. That guards the gate. The entrance to the very garden of Eden. That we can go back into that place. Amen. That we lost. That fellowship with God that we lost. I feel God. Thank you, Lord. Let him bless your heart tonight. I hope this has encouraged you a little bit. But I'm telling you, folks, this is no ordinary time. This is no ordinary hour. Amen. We're in the last days. Things are taking place, brother, every day. That are fulfillments of scripture. Yes. Fulfillments of scripture. Yes. Every day. You can't turn on the news. It used to be you had to get to a certain outlet to hear the straight of the news. Right. Yeah. But now you don't even have to turn to no outlet. You just turn on any news. Yeah. I told my wife, I said, sometimes I'll be going to work and I'll turn on the NPR. And you know, that's the most left as you can get. Probably the people that don't want to hear about you. But I want to hear each side of it. When I listen to that, even they acknowledge they do. That's that China and Russia yeah. and that all these things that are taking place and shifts going on in the earth right now. They do. We're in a time, folks. Amen. We're in a time. Yes. Let's press on. Yes. Press Let's on. press on like never before. Yeah. Whatever you're up against tonight, it may be sickness, it may be pain in your body, you may feel like you can't do much, press on anyway. Amen. Rub some big gay on it and press on anyway. Get some blue in you. It works pretty good for the heels and stuff. And press on. Amen. And press on. And let's be that body. The Lord took me in the spirit. I'm going to close as we come to the music. The Lord took me in the spirit, maybe, I don't know, 15, 17 years ago. And I seen Brother David, it looked like a battlefield, like during Vietnam or World War II, like a war zone. And there were body parts. And things had been burnt and bombed, and there were body parts laying, scattered. And it looked like maybe an arm would be over here somewhere, and a leg over here, and a shoulder, different body parts. And I saw this in the vision that I had. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what is this that I'm seeing? And he said, this is my body. He said, it's a dismembered corpse. And I watched and it was a sorrow come on me. And I thought, oh my God, there's no hope. And as I looked through the film, it was just like magnets. And body parts started moving around. And magnetizing, like coming toward each other. Yes. And the shoulder would come and join over here. Yes. And then a forearm would come and join here. And then here was a finger. And there were so many separated body parts. But they all started coming together. Yes. Yeah. I couldn't explain what that means, but I know exactly what that means. Yes, did. You know what I'm talking about? When the Lord moves in something, you may never be able to really explain that. But you know exactly what it is. You know exactly what he's saying. I knew exactly what he was telling me. He was telling me there's going to come a point in time where the things that have been separated, the parts of the body that have been cut off, the things that have been thrown to the side, amen, there's going to come a time when a, a call is going to go out, amen. There's going to be a trump of God go forth, a voice of God go forth, and it's going to cause those body parts, even the ones that have been thrown in the garbage, it's going to cause them to gravitate and levitate and come toward one another and become that body. Amen. One scripture said he's going to stand up a great and exceeding army of the people. And then God is wanting to draw us back to him tonight. Not to something new, not to some new form of religion, but back to the altar, back to the cross, back to Calvary, back to the Holy Ghost. And then back to holiness, back to thank God something that makes you lose sight of this world. It might roll you across the floor. It might run you through the house. Amen. But it'll be real. It'll be alive. It won't be dead. Amen. It'll bring life to you. And health to your bones. Hallelujah. He said he'd make his word, but make fat our bones. Fat in the bones. In the marrow. In the inner man. I 
need that don't need it. I need it. I want it. I don't want something else. I want this is that. But then because he said this is that, I want that. We don't need something else because everything else, there's so many things, other things. Coming down the road, I imagine there'll be more as time goes on. There'll be so many things come out of the woodwork. All we need is to get back to the Bible. Get back to the King James Version of the Word of God and let Him operate in our lives. Amen. Don't be ashamed when He wants you to shout. Get up and shout when He wants you to lay hands on somebody. Get up and do it. Amen. Just obey God and He'll bless you. He has to because His Word. He's bound by His Word. Nothing else binds God but His Word. He's bound because He is His Word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Forgive me tonight. Get wound up on this Jesus. I said you get wound up on this Jesus. You preach anything else. Not feel much. But when I talk about Jesus. When I talk about how lost He found me. When people... We've been sinners and we've been backsliders, some of us. Yep. Sometimes backsliders have it worse than people that never known God. Because everybody knows their dirty laundry. <laughs> and we specialize, somebody said about Pentecostals, we specialize in dirty laundry, don't we? You know we do. But the ones that are coming, that called out of the called out of the called out, are not going to specialize in dirty laundry no more. They're going to specialize in fruit. Not an inspector of somebody's life, but they're going to notice. I was in India and they had bananas that was red and about that long. And you didn't, I thought, man, what is that? I thought it was some kind of weed. And somebody told me, said, that is the sweetest banana you've ever put in your mouth. And I got some and eat them and they were so good, Brother Phil. But when I first looked at them, I didn't want them to do with it. When we look at people, we may not want them to do with them. But that sweet word of God lives inside of some of the roughest people you've ever laid eyes on in your life. There's men and women you'd look at and you'd be ashamed. We was in Jonesboro one time and a man walked up to me and, man, he had on, I'm talking about, as they say, I hate to say this on the phone, but I'm going to say he had on booty shorts and all kind of things. It was a man. And he come up and said some stuff. And I left and I thought, man, I don't know if I'm going to be seen around him. And God chastised me right on the spot. And he said, there's a word that lives in that man. You pray for him. You don't talk about him. Amen. And just sure a while back, I was in a place. And that very man, you hear me? That very man came up to us. I said, that very man came up to us and gave me a word from heaven. And then I know it was God. He did some repenting between that and the other night. It had been four or five years. But we got to be careful how we judge. we got to be careful how we put our mouth on things that God might yet be going to use. The end from the beginning. Because he's Alpha and Omega. And everything in between. Every letter in the Greek alphabet. He's everything and more. Tonight, don't you love him? We need to have a revival. Let's stand to our feet. Pray for Brother Brian, man. I want to keep this going. I don't want it to wear off. We need him tomorrow. We need him greater tomorrow than we did today. We'll need him greater next week than we did this week. Just pray right now. Just reach over and lay hands on your neighbor. Lay hands on somebody. It don't matter who it is. It don't matter what they It don't matter who it is. And pray. Minister to them. Pray for them. Let the Spirit of God that you feel right now just intercede for that person. God, tonight in the name of Jesus, God, touch my sister and her mother, Lord, right now. God, preach the word of God.